Today I'm going to be giving you guys an in-depth tutorial on how to use Kodiak Ghost Client. As you can see, I've got it on uh, my screen already right over here. Because Kodiak is open and Minecraft is open, it has actually automatically been injected, which is great. Anyways, um, for the rest, if you want the download for this, it's going to be linked down in the description below. Currently, I have booted up the free version, and that's what I'm going to be using for most of this tutorial. And then in the end, I'm going to log in with the paid version of Kodiak and show you the difference. Uh, the free version is available for everyone, of course, and at least in the beginning, it should suffice for pretty much all of you. Anyways, um, we'll start off with these tabs on the left-hand side. These contain all the utilities that Kodiak has. As you can see, there's a, combat utility, uh, there's a combat section, a visual section, a movement section, a utility section, and then there's also profiles. So starting off with the combat section, this is where most of the stuff is that Kodiak Client offers. Um, you can see all five of the utilities over here. Um, which isn't as much as you might usually expect from a client, but of course Kodiak is a ghost client, it's external, so it's a little different than clients like Horion. Anyways, um, as you can see, these keybinds that have been set here have already been set by default. Uh, you can turn all of the utilities on by pressing on the slider and turn them off by pressing on the slider again, or using these keybinds, um, which you can press to delete. Press once again there and any key to set, and then you can use these keybinds to turn utilities on and off anyways for the rest um we do get a description of exactly what the utility does right over there and if you press on this arrow we're going to be brought right into a menu that is going to allow us to customize this utility more specifically and now a lot of these do look quite a lot like each other and so for this first one i'm going to go quite in depth and then that's going to be pretty self-explanatory for the rest of these utilities so starting off over here in the auto clicker for the clicks per second which is just how much you click with the auto clicker uh, as you can see there's not one set value but there is a range uh, it's going to randomize in this range and that is to prevent uh, anti-cheat detection you can set this range however you want with these sliders over here as you can see for the rest there is also going to be some customization options for this specific utility um, for the auto clicker this is inventory fill break blocks and trigger bot most of these should be pretty self-explanatory breaking blocks for example is going to allow your auto clicker specifically to break blocks or not depending on how you want that set you can have this on or off Anyways, for the rest, there's also a randomization option over here, and there is one in a lot of these utilities. Um, so as I said earlier, this is going to randomize. Um, Kodiak is going to randomize in a certain value. And of course, because it's a computer system, nothing is entirely random, right? But there are different randomization methods that one can use. And as you can see, you can choose your own um, randomization method over here together with the drop chance and the drop chance is a chance that it will for like a tick or a, a very small amount of time drop below your set range and once again these are all measures to prevent anti-cheat detection um that's why kodiak is a ghost client of course Anyways, when we have the auto clicker on over here, I can simply press and hold and then Kodiak is automatically going to start clicking for me. So that's a pretty nice, is it not? Anyways, for the rest, we'll go over all of these. So the reach increases how far you can reach inside of Minecraft. Once again, you can set a range. 3.000 is the default range. Um, and now keep in mind that this reach is for hitting entities and not for reaching blocks. Um, and usually you would set this really quite low. Once again, uh, you can tweak the chance that it happens, and there is two different modes you can set the reach to. Velocity changes your knockback force. For velocity, it's quite interesting because there is a vertical range and a horizontal range. When you get knocked back inside of Minecraft, you get knocked back backwards and upwards just like that and basically um, Kodiak allows you to tweak both of those individually why is that important well because um, say you're playing Sky Wars it doesn't really matter when you get knocked back upwards but it matters way more when you get knocked back 
backwards, right? Because that's what's going to knock you off of the bridge. And so to decrease detection, you would limit, you would not really turn down the vertical range, but you would turn down your horizontal range more, right? Because that's what's, uh, that, that's what you don't want to happen. And this is exactly um, what allows you to tweak that. Once again, here, there is a drop chance as well as different specific modes you can set it to. As you can see, you could choose to either to also do only horizontal or only vertical. Anyways, for the hitbox, it'll change the hitbox size of your opponents. By default, it is set to the default Minecraft value, um, and you can tweak that. Of course, turning any of these values up or down a lot is going to make you get detected anyways. For the rest, jump reset. Jump reset is a legit method of reducing knockback by jumping, except Kodiak perfects this um, and allows you to take less knockback from that. Um, so you can once again set the chance that this gets applied. Obviously, if you jump reset perfectly 100% of the time, that gets sus. So as you can see, by default, it is set to 90%. Anyways, for the rest, we can move on to the visuals area now. Um, we have stream mode, which, as you can see, is going to hide this from you guys. You guys can no longer see this because I'm using OBS to record. As you can see, I can still see it, but you guys can't over here. And then when I turn this back off, then that's when it pops back in. For the rest, you can choose to hide it from your taskbar as well. You'll notice that it disappears from my taskbar. And you can also turn on no hurt cam. This removes damage screen shake. So this is good if you're trying to aim directly at something like a person that you're PvPing against. When they hit you, your camera is always going to shake a little bit, usually to the bottom left when you get hit. And this turns that off. Um, once again, if actually for all of these, you can set uh, keybinds. And for most of these things right here in the visual section, there isn't really much customization to do, but that's fine, of course. Anyways, moving on to the movement, there is auto sprint and timer. Auto sprint is kind of legit um, because, well, nothing's stopping you from sprinting every time you move, but this just does it for you. Now all you have to do is press W and then you automatically start going. I highly recommend keeping this always turned on. It's wonderful. I love it. For the rest, we also have timer over here. Timer allows you to increase the um, amount of ticks that happen in a second um, that allow you to gain a certain advantage. Once again, there's a chance you can set for this and then also the speed at which it happens. Uh, in this case, this is the random tick speed that you're changing. Um, moving on, it's not the random tick speed, it's the actual tick speed, I think. That's my bad. Uh, then in the utility section over here, you can uh, use a the debugger that is built in and you can also simulate fake lag. Um, this is... I think it's kind of similar to what blinking is. I absolutely hate it when I'm playing against someone and they do that, so it works. Um, basically, it's once again a legit utility because um, nothing is stopping you from, oops, I'm lagging a little, that's not my bad, you know, that's my internet connection, but it can, of course, in this case, give you an advantage if you lag on the enemy's screen, but not on your own. Anyways, finally, in this profile section over here, we can search profiles, which there currently aren't any, um, and profiles allow you to basically save um, all of these customizations. Say you've set this up for a specific server and it bypasses perfectly, then you can save that all to a profile, except I think you can't now. I think you need the paid version for that. Anyways, finally, in this settings area right over here, um, you can choose the color. As you can see, you can change this to really whatever you want. For the rest, you can also choose around GUI um, as well as to turn on GUI particles as you can see that's what that looks like um, currently I'm not using premium and there is two more key binds over here a open bind and a hide bind so because Kodiak is a ghost client of course you can always hide it so I can press on F8 and it's gonna despawn from my screen and if I press on F8 again 
that is actually just going to pop right back in, so that's pretty neat. And for the rest, the open bind might confuse you guys at first, because obviously there's nothing here inside of Minecraft to open with Kodiak, except there is. You see, I can press on the insert button, and then the Kodiak is going to automatically pop up over my Minecraft. Uh, this is more significant, obviously, when you're playing in full screen, which I'm not currently doing for the sake of this tutorial. Alright, so now I've quickly switched to the paid version of Kodiak right over here. You can see that it's paid. Um, as you see, I'm currently using the premium version. This adds a few things, and I'll go through those right now. First off, there's a new tab right up here called Aim. Uh, this is a few different aim bots. So there's a Silent Aim, which uh, boosts aim accuracy. There are specific methods that with, with which it does that. As you can see, you can customize all of that right over here quite useful quite a lot of customization there is a pearl aimbot which allows you to more accurately pearl towards the enemies um when you're using ender pearls once again there's a little bit more customization over here you can do for that and then there's also a no aim delay which just simply removes aim delay quite simple for the rest you're going to notice that there's a few more things overall as well um in the combat tab, there is a no jump delay, which fastens jump timing. As you can see, if I jump right now, then there's a certain amount of time it takes for when I come back down to be able to jump again. And that, well, decreases that. Um, anyways, for the rest, there is also a throw pearls and throw pots options. And these are just going to throw pearls and potions automatically for you. Nothing new in the visuals tab. In the movement tab, there is air acceleration, which is going to improve your air control and speed. What is that? Well, when you're falling, you're able to control where you go a tiny bit, and this is just going to improve how well you can do that. B hop is going to jump automatically for you. Fly um, enables free movement in the air. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, look at that. It does actually work a little bit. I thought the last time I tested the flying Kodiak didn't work. But now the only reason it's not working perfectly is because of Minecraft's new anti-cheat, which is kind of annoying, but oh well. Anyways, there's also high jump over here, which is going to boost your jump height. And there's a jetpack too, which is similar to fly. This is going to once again grant free movement in air. Anyways, in this utility area, there's a few more things as well. There's a disabler, which supposedly bypasses anti-cheats, although I can't really speak as to how well that works just yet. Um, I, it's kind of hard to tell when you're testing a client like this if it actually is just directly bypassing an anti-cheat. Um, for the rest, there's also anti-mobile, which is just going to prevent your player or your character from freezing. And then the addition faker... Um, this is one that's actually I mainly heard of on Java Edition um, because when you're using Java and you're using a hack, you're like using Fabric or Forge to implement that hack. And then you fake your edition and you tell the server that you're using vanilla so you can join or whatever. And in this case, you can change to Windows or really any other uh, edition. Although I think it has a little less direct utility on... Um, on better condition, but oh well, that's fine. And then finally, for the profiles, right now, nothing has changed just yet. Anyways, for the rest, uh, that was basically that. Thank you ever so much for watching. Of course, uh, do I think Kodiak Premium is worth it? I mean, it does add quite a lot, to be honest, but all of the completely necessary utilities are definitely already included in the free version. Uh, anyways, yeah, for right now, thank you ever so much for watching, and I do, of course, hope to see you again in the next one. Bye bye.